Now we are on the administration phase of the process. You know that you're in the administration phase because at the top of the screen, administration is highlighted. Also at the top of the administration screen is the phase bar, which you will navigate through as you scan, design, and mill a restoration. You will see that the various phases are not highlighted and are a little hard to see. This is because we have not started a new case yet. On this section, we are going to enter the restoration or restorations that we will be planning to do. On the left side of the screen is the indications menu. On the left side of the menu, you will see the single restoration option that has a single crown in the box or circle. One thing to note here is under restoration type, auto detect is highlighted, meaning that when you scan your prep, the software will auto detect what restoration you are doing. It can detect if the restoration is inlay, onlay, veneer, or crown by how the margins are drawn on the preparation. Below the single restoration option is an icon of a three unit bridge. This is the bridge restoration option. When you click on that, with this current version of the software, it gives you the options of selecting what your abutment restorations will be and lets you select a ponic. You will see a button that says missing. When you click on that, it then allows you to select any missing teeth on the model in the middle of the screen. When you are choosing to do a ponic, you will need to remove or select the missing tooth first and then choose where you want the ponic. But we can cover that in a later video. Below the bridge icon is the implant icon. When you click on that, you will see options to design a screw retained crown or abutment rift crown. The abutment rift crown is a cement retained implant restoration with a separate crown and abutment. You also have the option to select missing teeth in this sub menu as well. I was taught by people who understand Cerac software way better than me that if designing an implant restoration, you should always, always choose the abutment with the crown option. The reason being is you can design a screw retained or cement retained restoration with the abutment with crown option. If however, you design a screw retained using the screw retained option, you cannot change it later in the design process to a cement retained restoration. Now that being said, this was true for older versions of the software. And since we obtained this newer version, I have not officially confirmed if this has changed, but more on implants another time. Below the implant icon is the CIRAC guide icon. Dentsply Serona has launched the ability to mill a surgical guide for the dental implant workflow. This allows fully guided surgery for Dentsply Serona implants it does not appear that this workflow supports other implant companies at this time. I'm not gonna go into this very much right now, but also on the left side of the indications menu at the bottom of the menu, you will see a option to turn on smile design and virtual articulation. The smile icon is the smile design option and the models mounted on an articulator icon is the virtual articulation option. Virtual articulation takes into consideration the jaw movements of the patient to render a better proposal for the restoration. It contains average values for the digital articulator, but these values can be changed if you have known values for the patient. Again, we're gonna skip the smile design and digital articulation option at this time. So in the indications menu, go to the top and click on the single restoration or the crown icon. For restoration type, we are gonna leave that on auto detect. In the middle of the menu, you will see design mode. And there are three options. You have biogeneric individual, biogeneric copy, and copy and mirror. These options are basically how the software will make the restoration or what the software will use as a reference for making the restoration. As you will see shortly, when we enter the design phase of the process, the software will give us a restoration proposal. The proposal is a starting point for the design process. Normally you'll need to make some adjustments to the proposal, but it is a good starting point. When we're talking about design mode, we're talking about how the software will make the proposal. In the design mode, you can use the biogeneric 
variation tool to change the morphology of the tooth if desired. Biogeneric individual means the software will use the morphology of the neighboring tooth as a reference for the restoration proposal. How does it get this information of the neighboring tooth? Well, it comes from when you scan the teeth in the area that you are working or prepping. Biogeneric copy is when the software duplicates either the preoperative morphology of the tooth you're working on, or it duplicates something like a wax up or a mock up of what you want the tooth to look like. You can use this feature in different ways, but for the sake of what we are learning about at the moment, the best example is when you want to copy a restoration that is already there. For example, let's say a patient has a survey crown underneath a partial denture, and this survey crown needs to be replaced for whatever reason. Well, if you scan the crown before you cut off the crown that's already there, you can use this scan later and duplicate the exact appearance of the original crown. This means that your proposal generated by the software will be an exact duplicate of the original crown. Biocopy is a great way to copy anterior teeth or when using a wax up. Copy and mirror is a feature that uses the morphology of a similar tooth in the mouth. Typically this is a contralateral tooth. This is a great option when restoring a single central incisor and you want to match the other central incisor that is there. So let's say you're working on say number eight and you want to use number nine as a reference tooth to make number eight. You decide what features of number nine you want to copy and then the software will provide a mirror image of number nine when it makes a proposal of number eight. The vast majority of the time, I am using the biogeneric individual option as a design mode and that is the design mode we will select for this walkthrough. Below the design mode is the material section. This is where you select the manufacturer and material that you are using. Typically the most commonly used materials are the last three materials you have used may already display in that section or you may need to find the material that you plan to use. To find the material you plan to use, click on the drop down menu that says select manufacturer. Once you click on the select manufacturer, you will see a drop down menu that lists a variety of manufacturers. Select the manufacturer of the material that you are using. For this example, we are going to be using IPS Emacs from Ivaclar Vivadent. So here we will select Ivaclar Vivadent. Now you will see a second drop down menu that has appeared below the select manufacturer menu. When you click on this menu, you will see a full list of materials offered as CAD blocks for the manufacturer. The importance of this is that the software has algorithms that will set up in the software the design metrics, such as like minimal thickness metrics, and it helps us in the design of the restoration. This is important so you can stay within the parameters of the material that you choose. When you abide by the minimal thickness parameters of the material you are using, you will have a better clinical outcome. But if you violate the minimal thickness, especially on occlusal surfaces, then we can run into issues like restoration fractures. So for the sake of this exercise, go ahead and select uh, Emacs CAD as the material. So up to this point, we have selected what restoration we plan to do, the design mode for the proposal, and have selected the material of our restoration. Next, we select the tooth by clicking on the tooth you will restore located on the giant mouth model in the middle of the screen. For this example, we will do an Emacs on tooth number 30. So click tooth number 30. Once the tooth is selected, you will notice a small menu has populated on the right side of the screen that says case details. Inside that menu, I should see everything that we have already selected. This is a good time to verify this information before we proceed to the next phase. Also, if at any point during this entire process, I need to change something, I will change it by going back to the administration phase and click edit on the case details box. You will see a small pencil icon and a trash icon within the case details menu. By clicking the pencil icon, you uh, can actually make changes to the restoration and you will apply those changes when finished. 
The trash icon allows you to delete the restoration if you so desire. We're gonna leave everything as we selected it for now. So at this point, we can do one of two things. We can advance to the next phase of the process if we are only doing one restoration. And in this case, we are doing number 30, but we could add additional restorations if desired. For additional restorations, you simply go back through the indications menu on the left side of the screen and reselect the restoration, design mode, material of choice, followed by selecting the tooth. I also wanna mention that you can also select the milling unit you will mill from here on this screen as well. On my screen, you will see this option at the bottom of the indications menu on the left side of the screen. This software I am using is already defaulted to the mill I plan to use, so I am going to leave this alone for now. The last thing I wanna mention about the administration phase is the menu at the bottom of the screen. We said at the top of the screen is the phase bar that shows each major phase of the CAD CAM process. At the bottom of every screen is the step bar, which will contain the steps that must be taken to get to the next step or phase in the process. Currently on my screen, there's only one step and it says define restoration. This is highlighted and that tells me that this is the step that I'm currently working on. Next to where it says define restoration, you will see a check mark, which indicates that for this restoration, this step is complete. So that pretty much wraps up the administration phase. To move on from here, I will click on the next button at the bottom of the screen, indicating I am going to move to the next step. Alternatively, I can also click on the next phase in the phase bar at the top of the screen, which is the acquisition phase. For now, go ahead and click the next button at the bottom of the screen.